Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we explore together some of the cool science and technology from our favorite pop culture items. Today, we are talking about something extremely near and dear to my heart, dragons. I'm so excited. Ever since I was a little girl, all of my favorite books had to do with dragons. Uh, for example, Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey, one of my favorite book series, of course, deals with dragons on another world and how they help protect the people of that planet. And more recently, uh, Naomi Novik and her Temeraire novels kind of deal with dragons in an alternate history, uh, UK, where dragons help fight some of the wars of the time, which is really awesome. Awesome. We got more questions about this topic than I think anything else that we've covered. And of course, we got a lot of feedback about last week's episode too, about lightsabers. You guys take lightsabers really seriously. I don't know why I thought you wouldn't, but this is a very important topic for you guys. Um, actually, we got some great comments on YouTube. Audley K1 says, I would have to disagree here. If you watch Dr. Michio Kaku's three-part lightsaber series, he talks about how it could very well be possible, if somewhat inefficient, to create and wield a lightsaber. Lightsaber, and he includes a link to the video. Uh, we can link that in the show notes as well. But overall, I would have to say yes, the inefficiency thing, I think, is what's gonna stop this from being a, a weapon that we use regularly. But okay, let's get on with the dragons. We are joined by Dr. Peter Hogarth from the University of York in the UK. Professor, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. So our first question today um, comes from Amanda, who says, why of all things are dragons characterized to breathe fire rather than something like ice or toxic fumes or toxic belches, as she said? Um, when did the connection of dragon and fire breathing happen? Well, breathing ice would be a bit difficult, I think. You, you tend to, to kind of freeze over. Um, toxic fumes, actually there were one or two dragons, which according to the stories, breathed out toxic fumes. There was one which could bring birds out of the air by breathing on them. Um, and I wanted to other things that one of the um, tribes the Romans conquered used a kind of banner in the shape of a dragon and probably um, they had some kind of pyrotechnics which made it look as if it was breathing fire. So it was almost uh, like an animatronic dragon in a way? Yeah, like... yeah. Actually the Romans were smart, they took it over as a standard and they used it to intimidate other people they were attacking later on. It's called the Draco and archaeologists have found quite a number of them. But then there's the whole aspect of flying. I, I have a feeling that maybe giving dragons flight would probably be the hardest part. That would be a problem, yes. Yeah, uh, particularly if it's a, four, a dragon with four legs, you know, where do the wings come from? Um, sometimes you get two two-legged dragons with wings. That, that's a little bit more realistic. But uh, bats fly, birds fly. If dragons existed, why, why shouldn't they fly? <laughs> wouldn't they just be too big? I mean, wouldn't the wingspan have to be just incredible? That, that would be a problem. A lot of dragons were supposed to be enormous. And there's certain rules of physics and biology that you can't get around. So, for example, if you double the length of an animal, then its weight increases by eightfold. And therefore, the wing area would have to increase by eightfold in order to get it up in the air. So it'd be quite difficult to imagine a really, really big dragon would work. Um, up to about the size of a Californian condor, no problem. I would still be pretty intimidated by a gliding dragon, I'd have to say. Well, me too, me too. <laughs> Lazy k -Pox said, uh, my question about dragons would be, are there different types of dragons or is the same kind of dragon represented across cultures? Well, there were similarities, but if you look just at dragons in Europe, but they're better documented, you did get some different kinds of dragons. There were some dragons with two legs and wings, some with two legs and no wings, some with four legs and two wings. Even one I've seen a picture of which had 12 legs and about six wings. Huh. So they did, did vary. There were quite a lot of different forms, even just in Europe. Um, however, mostly you, you can find recognizable dragons as you would normally understand them in most parts of the world, from, from um, North America to New Zealand and of course Asia particularly. Now our next question comes from Sapper21GX. Uh, dragons, how were they created? Who first encountered the story? Was it more of an evolutionary thing or was it a creationism kind of thing? And, and why do they have horns, wings, and scaly skin kind of across the board? The earliest dragons, and it's almost the earliest written kind of anything actually, comes from about 5,000 years ago and it's some clay tablets in the ancient Near East. Uh, land that was known as Sumer in those days. And the first dragons are an account of how the world came into existence. It's a creation myth, if you like. You know, you don't understand 
how the world exists, you don't understand much that goes on in it, really. So you tell yourself a story about how it came into existence. So a god slays the dragon. The dragon is representing chaos, storms, tempests, and things you don't really like much. The, uh, the god is slaying it, creating order, usually carves it up. Part of it becomes the earth, part of it becomes the heaven. And actually, if you think about the Garden of Eden, the serpent is a bit dragon-like and was often illustrated in the Middle Ages, very like a dragon, sometimes with legs and, and horns. So you've got this kind of scary monster, which is being overcome by the forces of good, if you like. Um, and it's scary. Well, what does it actually look like? Well, a scary animal has got a scary teeth and scary claws and breathing fire is pretty scary. So I think once they had the idea of this great scary monster, all the kind of scary features came fairly naturally. Or they were transferred from other real scary animals, giant snakes, big lizards, can be pretty scary. So a dragon is obviously pretty scary, so it has scaly skin like lizards and snakes. They're giving dragons like a bad rap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> The next question is from Lynx305. Uh, do you think the fossilized bones of dinosaurs in any way contributed to the myths about dragons in the early days? I'm sure they did. Uh, if you find a fossil dinosaur or, or any other large fossil and you know about dragons but you don't know about dinosaurs, then obviously it's a dragon fossil. So the answer is yes. I mean, people obviously didn't preserve the the fossils, we don't really know. Now, dragons are obviously very popular in, in, in pop culture today, uh, including Game of Thrones, one of my favorite shows. Um, have you seen it? And if so, do you think that the dragons represented there would be accurate were they to actually exist? I have looked at their, their dragons, and they're, they're as realistic, I think, as an imaginary animal can be. <laughs> um, if you um, can get over the problem of a reptile that flies and, and so on, they actually, I think, would, would kind of work as um, invented or invented animals. So yeah, I think they're, they're pretty good, certainly in the uh, kind of tradition of, of dragons, as people believed in them. Professor, thank you so much for joining us today and answering our questions. I think we can probably conclusively say dragons fictional? Fictional. fictional. <laughs> Sorry, but fictional. Ah, oh, <laughs> yes. my breaking heart, my breaking heart. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, it's been a pleasure. Oh, my heart is breaking, but I have to give this one a fictional. Yes, it is possible at the end of the day to create some lizard-like creatures that could kind of look like dragons, but they don't do all the cool stuff that dragons do in, in fiction. For example, the Komodo dragon, it is a very dangerous lizard. It is ginormous, and it also has a bite that is filled with bacteria that can really screw you up pretty good. Just ask Phil Bronstein. Like I said, we're not going to see any dragons from Game of Thrones swooping down, burning our villages and whatnot. <sighs> girl can't have everything she wants, can she? But anyway, I want to know what you guys want to see on the show for next time. Do you want more Game of Thrones stuff? Do you want coverage of a game like Bioshock Infinite? Tell me what you want to see on the show and who you want to see on the show. You can leave a comment about this episode or others right on the YouTube page or send me a tweet at Veronica or post on my Facebook wall at facebook.com Veronica. I'll see you guys next time.